My biggest inspirations as as a drag queen, it's it's more about the character who Vivian is. She takes a lot of influences from people such as Barbara Streisand and Judy Garland and Joan Crawford, very much Joan Crawford, um, and Betty Davis, all the 40s kind of stars who were who were what made um, popular culture today, I think. Drag is, is something that I dabbled with from, from a really early age. I started uh, performing as a, as a drag artist um, properly about four or five years ago, um, and it's not really until I moved to, to Manchester about 18 months ago that this has kind of all, all come together. I've been a bit braver with my makeup and been a bit braver with, with my look, and I played it really safe uh, before I moved to Manchester. Um, but I've surrounded myself with drag drag royalty such as anaphylactic to gorgeous Blair the family gorgeous for instance you know just working with them and being in the same area getting ready or anything you just learn so much in order to to say okay this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna dress up as a woman for for a living this is this is what I want to do and this is what I'm passionate about it takes a certain type of person you you have to have a backbone and you have to have a really thick skin um, just working with other queens is really taxing. Like we're in on Canal Street, we're all sort of at that level where we can all just dish it. Facebook amongst the Canal Street drag queens is manic. If you ever get a chance to go and have a look at them and, and look at the all of the the shade and the tea that's being spelled, it's crazy. It really is. Um, but we all just get on with it and we all just live for it. So, for instance, I live. Um, about a 20 minute walk from where I usually perform and I'm not really troubled by walking in, in a full face I wouldn't walk in full drag because heels hurt, drag hurts make sure that you're aware of that as well, drag hurts I'm not really scared to, I mean maybe I should be and I think that there are, there are times when you have to really watch yourself and, and watch what you're doing. Uh, for instance, I performed in Liverpool. That was dangerous, just arriving. I'm joking, I love Liverpool. But you, you do have to watch yourself, and there are certain crowds that you would avoid if you're, if, if you're walking to a gig or anything like that. I would just say, stay safe, um, be vigilant, and make sure that you're, that you're still being who you want to be, and don't let anybody censor that. But still stick to your guns. Because at the end of the day, it's them that have got the problem, it's not you. The biggest deal in my career, should I say, um, was being a finalist for the RuPaul Drag Race UK Ambassador competition. I know it was like two, three years ago, and every drag queen who watches this will be like, oh my god, get over it, it was forever ago, but I'm still clutching onto it. Because it was epic, I mean, you know, it was... It was an experience when we were there, but it was still, even to have that recognition from even the producers, it may not have been RuPaul, but even if it was the producers, it was a, it was a big moment and I got to meet people who I now consider to be really good friends. Um, and I think that's what a lot of the people took from that competition. Um, and being in the final, walking a runway in front of RuPaul, um, uh, Jodie Harsh was DJing, like Jonathan Ross was there, Kit Price was there. It was. It was a big, it was a big thing, um, so I think that's probably the, uh, the highlight of my drag career so far. Um, but there's so much more coming, like, it's, Manchester's really opened up a hell of a lot for me, um, so I'm excited to share it with you all. I think what makes Manchester different um, in regards to the, to the drag scene is that everyone has their own style. There are so many different styles of drag. It's very, dare I say, Americanized in Manchester because um, in America you have like the pageant queens who live in one city and you have like the fish queens and then like the club kids. We've got that, but all in one city. Um, you just have to go, you just have to go to Cha Cha Boudoir uh, at Cruz, um, hosted by the Family Gorgeous one Friday, and you just see so many different types of, of people there. People who consider themselves to be drag queens, but aren't your stereotypical drag queen. It's not what you expect to, to see, and it's because it's 
it's art. It really is. It's it's a hub of people who who are incredibly creative and incredibly incredibly artistic, um, and have something that they want to share with the world. Um, and it just so happens that we all just happen to be in Manchester. I, I don't know why. I don't even know how it happened. Um, and it was probably when I first started one of the last places that I thought I'd kind of be. But it's it's just so it's just so exciting. It's it's exciting. And every event's kind of different. Like you you walk down Canal Street and I think it helps having like a gay um, a gay village in Manchester because you kind of know what you're gonna be expecting and you kind of know that there will be probably a drag queen or at least one of those bars. You can walk down Canal Street, um, <laughs> Any night of the week, and you will find a drag queen in at least one or two of the bars there. Mm. Um, but Manchester's great for also opening um, drag up to to venues that aren't necessarily gay. Um, I work at Menagerie, which is a restaurant, um, as a drag queen, as a performer, as a singer. That's, that's what I do, and that's not gay at all, at all. It's brilliant, though. It's good fun.